What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash stories about Kevin. Alright, this story's called, You Are Going to Miss Your Flight. Sorry for the long post on mobile, so please excuse the mistakes. I think this comes into the Kevin category. However, if it doesn't, I will find another place to put it in. New to Reddit, so if you could guide me to the place, that would be great. Thanks in advance. Some backstory. I am a European expat living in the Middle East, having done so three quarters of my life. My dad wanted to retire to a country in Asia and had bought a house there. The house is approximately three hours away from the airport, this is important, and in a valley surrounded by fields. There is a main road and some other housing compounds around, but there is a fair distance between them. The main town is a five minute drive away and very easy to get a tuk-tuk to come and get you. Now anyone who travels extensively knows that you should get travel insurance, not just for medical emergencies, but also in case your luggage gets stolen or damaged, death, god forbid, but also in case you miss your flight, etc. Also very important. We are pretty close to the family from my mom's side, and when someone asks if you can use the house in Asia for their holiday, the answer is usually yes, provided that they leave it clean when they depart. Normally, when they fly from Europe to the Middle East, stay for a couple of days before flying over to Asia for their holiday, and then back to the Middle East for a few days before going home. On with the story. One of my cousins, let's call her Dana, and her boyfriend, who shall be referred to as Kevin, asked if they could stay at the house for 10 days. It so happened that I was going to be in Asia on holiday around the same time, though I would arrive before they do and depart before they do, but at a few overlapping days. I had not met Kevin before. My mom had a few times and said that he was not the sharpest tool in the shed. But he is Dana's boyfriend and she loves him. So for the sake of keeping the peace in the family, we say nothing and welcome him into our fold. At the end of the day, I don't have to live with him. Anyway, Dana and Kevin arrive in Asia. I have arranged a driver to collect them from the airport and bring them to the house. Due to it being a weekend and there being a lot of traffic on the road, their trip from the airport took four hours. The moment I met him, I understood exactly what my mom was talking about when she said that Kevin was not the sharpest tool in the shed. The guy had no filter, stating that the house was in a boring compound. I, not someone who takes a lot of crap from anyone, especially when you are allowing them to use your house free of charge, stated that if he doesn't like it, he can book himself a hotel in town. There is a small restaurant just across the street from the compound. And if you are like me, not in the mood to cook because, you know, you are on holiday, you take advantage of that restaurant being a five minute walk away. However, because the path is not lit, you need to take a torch with you just to be on the safe side. You are in Asia, coming across monitor lizards, snakes both poisonous and non-poisonous, and creepy insects are the norm, and I would rather avoid them. Some of these insects can leave some nasty bites, especially the big ass centipedes, and you can be hospitalized if bitten by the wrong insect at the wrong time. Dana and I spot this weird looking thing that looked like a thick blade of grass in the fields close to the path. It is not windy, however, it was moving from side to side, and as we got closer to pass it, it moved more erratically. Dana and I got the hint and left a bigger gap. Not Kevin, he was highly amused by what he saw and started touching this blade of grass. Having done some research, it looks like the back end of a praying mantis, but can't be sure. It could have just been a blade of grass. I told him not to be an idiot and leave whatever it is alone. He then decided he wanted to go out looking for monitor lizards and snakes in his shorts and sandals. Me wondering if he was born without common 
sense to walk on, I can't deal with stupidity and was afraid I would say something I shouldn't. Unfortunately, and I suppose luckily, no lessons were learned that day. Anyway, it was my time to leave and go back home to the Middle East. Now, for those who travel internationally, know that you should ideally be at the airport three hours before the flight is due to depart, allowing you time to check in luggage. And security at that airport is pretty tight, so it can take about 30 to 45 minutes before you are finally through it. Plus, going through passport control, another 30 to 45 minutes, etc. I usually leave the house about seven hours before the flight is due to depart to allow for unexpected traffic jams, plus a pit stop at the halfway mark. I was glad that I did, as there was some road work going on, causing a delay, and it took me four and a half hours to get to the airport. I informed Dana and Kevin of this so they can organize their time accordingly. I usually use the same taxi service when in Asia, and although they charge a little more for their services, their vehicles are always clean and well-maintained, so I can understand their higher rate. Note, the difference in fare is 5 euros more than other companies. I offered to Kevin that I can book the taxi service for him and Dana to the airport. However, he thought it was too expensive and that he would find someone else to take him and Dana there. On the day of their departure, I got a call from Dana stating that they were on their way to the airport. This confused me as they should already be there, or at least just arriving, as it was two hours before their flight was due to leave. When I asked her when she left, she said half an hour ago. Conversation goes roughly as follows. You left half an hour ago? You're not going to make it to the airport before your flight leaves? We will be fine. We should get there in an hour or so. No, Dana, you will not get there in an hour or so. You may be halfway there by that time, but nowhere near the airport. Whose bright idea was it to leave the house three hours before the flight is due to depart? Kevin, he's the one who booked the taxi. <sighs> Let me speak to Kevin. Hey, uh, we're on our way to the airport. I know, and you are not gonna make it. We'll be fine. The driver said that he can get us there in time. Which would be when exactly? I showed the driver my flight ticket and he said we should leave three hours before my flight time. Confused, as pretty much all airport drivers know to be at the airport three hours before departure. Which company did you use? Capital City Taxi? Ugh. Kevin! First, where the hell did you throw your common sense? I told you that you needed at least three hours to get to the airport and warned you that there was road work. Secondly, this guy is not a regular airport driver. He probably doesn't know that you need to be at the airport three hours before you depart. He probably doesn't know what an e-ticket looks like and thought you needed to be there for departure time. Last, don't you think that if it took one and a half hours to get to the airport? It would have taken the same amount of time to have gotten from the airport to the house? Wait for it. Uh, it's not my fault. Yeah, folks, he actually said that. Of course not, Kevin. Heaven forbid that you actually have to use your own brains. Put Dana on the phone. So are we gonna miss our flight? Yes, Dana, you are. You need to call the airline and tell them that you are going to miss your flight and to rebook you and Kevin on on a later one. There will be a charge, but not as much as missing the flight and booking a new ticket. I book a lot of travel for my boss, so I am aware of all that info. I think we can still make it. Oh god, his stupidity is rubbing off on her. Google map your current position to the airport. I hang up trying to nurse a headache. A few minutes later, Dana sends a screenshot of her current position to the airport, stating that they are over two hours away from the airport. I think Google Google Maps is wrong. There is no need to change the flight. We'll be fine. Of course, Dana. Both Google Maps and I are completely wrong. Call me when you get to the airport. Over two hours later, they arrive at the airport, miss their flight, and had to buy another ticket. Neither had travel insurance, so couldn't try and claim money back for their missed flight.
flight. In the end, they had to shell out 800 euros for two one-way tickets from Asia to the Middle East just so that they could save 7 euros on an airport taxi. Dana and Kevin are now expecting their first baby. I am hoping that she is not gonna turn out like Kevin. Okay, first off, geez, OP, take it easy, man. I don't know, in my opinion, OP was being a little unnecessarily rude to Kevin. While Kevin was kind of a dummy head, he didn't really do anything to deserve any direct hostility. Then again, I wasn't there, but from what I could tell, OP was being a little bit of a mean person here, but <laughs> Kevin was very much a Kevin. Alright, this story's called Weekend of Mayhem and Destruction. I am still writing stories about my brother from back in high school. He had one weekend that was full of accomplishments, but not good ones. This all started on a Thursday, because schools were closed the next day. He was supposed to mow the lawn before he went to do anything that weekend, mostly because he claimed to have done the mowing the week before, but he didn't actually do it. I think he thought that that no one could tell that he didn't do it, but I have never figured out how he could be so dumb. Dad had a new riding mower that Idiot Pro was not allowed to use. He was supposed to use the old riding mower. That still worked fine. Idiot Bro was not allowed to use the new mower because if he used anything with mechanical parts, it would not be working when he was done with it. Bikes, cars, mowers, the mixer, the blender, you name it. He would use it and it would be broken when he was done. Of course, Idiot Pro had to use the new mower. He was told not to use it so no one would be upset if he used it, right? One reason he was told not to use it was because it had a problem that caused it to burn through oil. Dad made sure to tell us both that Idiot Pro was not allowed to use the new mower because the oil had to be checked before it was used. Dad was going to fix the problem, but he just didn't have the time the weekend before when he got it. Dad hadn't even gotten to use his new mower yet. So, of course, Idiot Bro used the new mower. And, of course, he did not check the oil first. He cracked the engine block. He didn't even get a third of the yard cut. So, of course, he didn't use the working mower or the push mower and finish the yard. He just left it and left the mower sitting in the middle of of the uncut yard. Our parents both got home late that Thursday, so it was too dark to see the uncut yard. Friday, Idiot Bro had some work to do for our parents to work off the car accident he was in. Our parents gave us set chores to do, and then there were other chores we would get paid a bit over minimum wage for. He was supposed to paint both sides of the door to the laundry room. It was actually a set of folding chairs because their house is set up so strangely. So Idiot Bro took the doors outside to paint them. He set them up against the side of the garage. Then he took a roller and rolled paint onto these louvered doors. Of course, he did not put anything between the doors and the garage, so he left huge swipes of white oil-based paint along the side of the garage. Idiot Bro couldn't wait for the paint to dry and then turn the doors. That would take time and he wanted to go and party. So he turned the doors while they were still very wet. He didn't just turn them around, but left them there while he left paint all over the garage. He moved the doors to a dry place. That way he could leave even more paint on the garage. He came running into me, all upset at about 3 p.m. He thought he could just wipe the paint off the garage and no one would know because paint thinner removes everything, doesn't it? He wanted to know how to get the paint off. I told him it wasn't coming off, probably not for years. This upset him so much he went out and punched the doors, breaking one of them. He also stepped in the paint tray and tracked oil-based paint onto the kitchen floor. I was supposed to meet mom up at her work on a university campus to have dinner that night. Idiot bro had come up with a plan to make all of the destruction go away so he wouldn't be in trouble. His idea? Tell our parents that I did it. Because they never got mad at me and of course they would believe I insisted on doing all his chores for him, but letting him get paid for them. 
I went off to meet my mom for dinner. As we waited for our food, I told her that I had some things to tell her. I was telling her to prepare for what she would see when she got home. She had some health issues at the time and she was told to avoid stress and surprises. I told her that idiot bro tracked paint into the kitchen and the garage was probably going to have to be painted. Then I told her that something was wrong with the mower and it was belching black smoke when it stopped running. Running. She would see it as soon as she pulled into the driveway. Overall, it ended up costing about $4,000 to fix all the destruction, and that doesn't include the cost of replacing the door to the laundry room. Mom just left the doors off. They are still off to this day, 30 years later. I wish that my idiot brother was not such an idiot, or that this was the worst destruction he ever did. Wow, he beat $4,000 thousand dollars okay i'm interested all right this story's called kevin encounters his own kevin with explosive results this takes place on the 4th of july statistically the most dangerous time for kevin shenanigans kevin was at home enjoying the july 4th weekend with his friend kevin too kevin and kevin too have many fun interactions with the local authorities but this one would be the craziest kevin and kevin too have had purchased some fireworks to enjoy the holiday with. But Kevin, too, really wanted to see what they looked like before going outside. So he lit a whole box of fireworks and placed them on the Kevin's couch. The fireworks started going off and exploding in the room, catching the couch and nearby items on fire. Kevin rushed to the living room to see what the commotion was, only to notice the conflagration where his couch once was. Thankfully, Kevin lives in an apartment complex with fire suppression systems in it, saving the rest of the complex from damage. Or so Kevin and Kevin too thought. The police fire property management company show up and assess the damage. It turns out all Kevin's neighbors had their sprinklers go off as well because of the fire, causing thousands of dollars in damage and displacing numerous families, including Kevin. Kevin is now awaiting sentencing for property damage, and Kevin still can't go back home. Okay, um, I would cry. Kevin too was quite the smart fella here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.